Hi, my name is Sofia Mackey. Um, I am a student at Bemidji State University. I work in the Spanish department and uh, we have a presentation about Latin roots. Latin. Latin's supposed to be dead, isn't it? So what's the point of learning it? Well, you're right, Latin is dead um, because, well, we still have some uses for it, like in biology for scientific names and in word roots, like we're covering here. Um, it is not commonly spoken, so it can't evolve anymore, so uh, if you think about slang and what, the way that you talk with your friends and your family, it's different than how you might write an essay or speak formally to um, when you're doing an interview with the boss, for example. So that's kind of what I'm getting at here. We still have the formal use of the language, but it's not being used casually anymore, so that means that it's dead. So the point why would we study a dead language is it is still being used, like I said, in uh, biology, for example, there's some medical terminology and um, just really useful to know some roots that connect uh, words and languages. Latin does have a hold in several places. So, for example, you have the root word terra, which I don't know how to do a Latin accent, but that's how you spell it. So that means land or earth. And some English examples are, for example, terrace, which is kind of um, steps that are filled with earth, kind of, really big steps. Uh, terrestrial, which you might be familiar with, extraterrestrial, which means outside of earth, basically. And terrain, which just kind of is a word for uh, the how the land is, where you're at. And uh, in Spanish, tierra, which is pretty close. Uh, next up, aqua, already kind of familiar to you, I'm, I'm going to guess. We have it, yeah, water. Uh, we have it in English in like aquatics, like an aquatics program with swimming and whatnot. Aquarium, fish in, aqueduct, which is kind of um, a way for water to move around in cities, I think. And Spanish, agua. You just literally change the Q to a G. Here, scola. That might look familiar to you too. School. We have it in scholar, which is like a person who is just really into school. Uh, school. Scholastic. Um, to do with school. Scholarship. Money for school. And Spanish. Escuela. So it changes a little bit, but you still have the SC and the LA. So Escola, Escuela, School. Pretty similar. So on to the history. Latin got spread around a lot because um, spoken by the Romans, who had a pretty big empire, if you might remember your history class. So uh, Latin was spread by the Romans because they themselves spread around a lot of countries and they spoke Latin and the native languages of those countries and they kind of mixed. Um, so they have heavy influence on like the Romance languages, like Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Romanian. Um, so Latin, it was kind of like the fancy language at the time also. Uh, so like you have your literature, if you're making a great work back in the old times, it's probably going to be in Latin. And uh, scientific work, uh, Christian theology, fancy stuff. Uh, Spanish begins in the Iberian Peninsula, which is where Spain's at on the uh, kind of the upper right side of the map. And Spain also uh, had some conquests, started moving around the world, so it spread to other countries, like um, especially in South America. And um, Spanish, like we mentioned on the last slide, has strong influence from Latin and Greek and Arabic and a lot of the native languages in South America. So it is actually the second most spoken language in the world, and there are 20 countries, uh, thereabouts, whose primary language is Spanish. English uh, comes from Britain, or England, and it has so many other languages mixed in. Uh, Celtic, German, French, and French comes with Latin, so Latin is in English, and then uh, languages that were being invaded by the British. and you know, the rest is history. Uh, today, around 20% of people 
around the world speak English, uh, though that's mostly non-native populations, so people not in the US of A or Britain. Um, it is the most studied language, and around 35 countries has have English listed as an official language. So, history lesson over. Here's some uh, shared roots that you might know the words. So the Latin root, uh, sil, sil, means quieter still. Um, in English, we have silent. In Spanish, the uh, same word is silencioso, which both you can see the S-I-L in there. Um, and then bio for life and logi, which is study, uh, biology in English, and biología in Spanish. Uh, rota, which wheel, rotate, which it's kind of like if you have a wheel and you turn it, you rotate it. So it's like you turn it like it's a wheel. So rotate and rotar in Spanish. And unicorn, uh, with uni meaning one and corn meaning horn. So unicorn, one horn in Spanish, unicornio. Um, abyso, depths, like the English word abyss, which uh, you might be familiar with, with the ocean with like really deep cracks in the bottom. That's like an abyss. Um, in Spanish, abismo. By, two, uh, I think you could probably come up with a number of words with by in them, but bicycle is the one that we have here, bicicleta uh, in Spanish, and carn for flesh, and war for swallow which, um, carne, like, if you have chili con carne, it's like a food with extra meat on it, so. Um, yeah, you have carnivore, so swallows flesh, beats meat, and carnivoro, and there's like a ton more examples. And Latin gets mixed up with Greek, and there's just, language is complicated, but really fun. So, that is it for the presentation. Here are the links to my sources, and, uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Good day.